Moving on, shares of arms sliding here, despite delivering a beat on the top and bottom line. Rolf Bulk, New Street Research Equity Research Analyst, joining us here to discuss. So, Rolf, uh, the arm reports, investors clearly disappointed, at least initially here in the, in the after hours. G- give us your take. What, what's pressuring the stock in the after hours, Rolf? Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. The, the quarter itself was not a bad print, actually. They beat, they beat on revenue, driven mostly by very strong licensing activity. Um, royalties, which is the other revenue stream, that was also a beat. But their yearly guide, so for fiscal 2025, came in a bit light, 22% growth, which is not bad. Um, also in a fairly broad range, 18 to 27% growth is what their uh, is what their guide indicates, and that's a bit shy of uh, of consensus who model 26% growth. So towards the very high end of what Arm thinks is feasible. Now. To us, it's not a surprise that they guide within such a um, such a wide range. That really reflects that part of ARM's business, uh, licensing in particular, is quite lumpy. So uh, the variability there on a quarter-to-quarter basis is very high. So the quarter itself is not necessarily a bad one, but a bit light towards what the market was uh, was expecting in terms and, of the guide. And, and why do you think it, there is that light? I mean, you talked about the sort of lumpiness, if you will. What is causing that in the company's business? So the way you should think about ARM is that they have this business of, of selling their IP and um, subsequently chip manufacturers using that IP to, to, um, to design their chips. Now, that initial part of the, of the process of selling that IP, you know, um, a, a big client might, might buy your, your designs one particular quarter, but not the next one. And to forecast that out over a multi-quarter, let alone a year, is very difficult, even for ARM, who, of course, have the best visibility out there. So that's, that is simply inherent to the business that, uh, that they have and perhaps not fully appreciated by the market that this is uh, a business with a lot of variability um, when it comes to quarterly revenue streams. And, and Rolf, you know, Arm, you know, is moving into new markets. But when you think Arm, you think smartphones. What, what is your outlook, I guess, Rolf, for smartphones this year, and, and what it means for Arm's business? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting question because you're right. Smartphones is around forty five percent of their of their royalty business. Um, now, smartphones, we think, you know. It's recovering, but only only slightly. It's really lukewarm, so low single-digit unit growth. But for ARM, because they are in, in the midst of an architectural change of, of their V8 to V9 architecture, and they only do that once every 10 years or so, um, customers such as Apple, Qualcomm, MediaTek are going to pay a lot more to use ARM's IP. So smartphones only growing low single digits for for the market as a whole for units, but for ARM, revenues can grow up to 30% this year for for smartphones specifically. On top of that, they have another number of of growth drivers such as cloud, which is which is really working in ARM's favor. So what you get down to is is revenue growth for the year that can be can quite easily be north of 20%, but that's fully reflected in expectations as they stand already. You know, as you look around the chip industry right now, Rolf, um, is that kind of broadly true, broadly true of chip stocks that they sort of reflect the outlook? Or are there places where you can look that haven't uh, caught up with the, the fundamentals? Yeah, we've seen a real, a real bifurcation in terms of valuation with companies exposed to AI doing very well and some of the companies exposed to autos and industrials, on the other hand, not performing that well. These companies such as um, such as On, NXP, Infineon, SD Micro. So we think that there is still value absolutely in, um, in, that, in that latter category. When it comes to chips that are more exposed to, to AI, et cetera, such as Nvidia, AMD, Intel, um, what 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 becomes the bigger question at this point is not so much what is going to happen in 2024 or even 2025 where visibility is quite high but what is going to happen with that market beyond so in 2026 and there um there it's really still a big question mark and increasingly the market is going to think about um is think, going to view that lack of visibility as a potential source of risk so in terms of positioning um, the the uh, props, perhaps the more low risk um, exposure is towards automotive and industrials at this point in time. 
Rolf, do you, do you consider ARM a, a smart AI play? To, to some degree, they are, yes. So they have that data center business that I mentioned. Um, importantly, it is not GPUs that, um, that you've been hearing a lot about. It is not specialized chips like Google's TPU, it's CPUs, which is a business that has been under a lot of pressure over the last few years. Now, ARM is, is taking share in that market. So they are, they are um, taking share from AMD, from Intel. So they are uh, a very fast grower in a market that is under under secular pressure because of that uh, that increased use of, of GPUs in the data center. So they are an AI play in that sense. More importantly, what is really ARM's domain is everything that happens um, on the edge. So this is smartphones, IoT, et cetera. And there, ARM almost have, has a monopoly on high-end processors. And as we see AI move towards the edge, so more of your, or of your compute being done on the smartphone rather than on the data center, ARM should be a big beneficiary of that trend of, of having more powerful chips in your smartphone. And, um, and that is a big, a big drive of ARM in, uh, in the coming years, yes. Rolf, it was great having you on the show today. Thanks so much. Pleasure, thank you.